So the last step thing that you want to do right before you print and make sure that everything is set is you want to check your screen for pinholes. So you want to kind of hold it up to a light if you can find one, the window is great. And look for little places where the screen might have blown out and you didn't want it to. So sometimes it happens around the edges of a transparency. Sometimes it happens just because you didn't burn the screen long enough or there was a problem with your emulsion. But you want to make sure you go in and fill those things in before you print. Um, it can be a real pain in the rear end and real disappointing when you get this great image done and then, uh, then you end up with pinholes all over it. So if you have pinholes, I have a couple in here. What you want to do is just get a brush and get the brown screen filler. So the brown green screen filler is, we also use it for etching and intaglio, so it's over there. Um, you know, next to the inks and stuff like that. And uh, you can just get this stuff and just paint it on there. So um, any place where I'm trying to stop out a pinhole, I'll just paint this brown, uh, the brown junk in there a little bit more and hopefully that'll fill that in so that I can get a nice clean print out of it. So, so you just want to take your time. Um, the more care you take at this point to make sure that everything is right, the better luck you're going to have as you go. So you want to paint out your pinholes. Um, you can also tape them. So if you want to get a roll of tape, you can put some tape over things. There's any of that, any number of things that you can do that way. Um, but you want to go ahead and make sure that you're blocking out any problematic areas um, before you go to print. And if you want, you can even put this over on the light table and that can help you a little bit too um, as you get ready to uh, kind of try and figure out where they are. So pinholes, block them out, uh, let it dry, and then you're ready to print. <clears throat> okay, so, all right, and so before we get ready to print, there's a couple things you might want to do. It depends on your image and where it's at, but sometimes it's nice to go in and kind of tape off this bottom edge along here that, uh, so that you don't get a lot of ink accidentally squirting out of there. It depends on how clean you are when you print. Um, I like to just, you always want to put tape, if you're going to tape things off, you want to do it on the bottom of your screen, not on the top, right? Because you don't want the squeegee will just peel that tape right off there. So, so I just kind of tape off the edges of mine like this right here. Drop this down, make sure everything is set. You know, you want to double check everything. So put your piece of paper down and make sure that the pins or the card or whatever system you have for registration is lining up the way you want it to. Looks good. So I'm going to go ahead and print now. I'm ready to go. So I have the top half of my thing up here is the other half of this image. So I'm going to kind of try and keep the ink away from that. So I'm just going to take a little bit of this ink and pour it, pour it on there. Kind of in a little bead like this, right? And then I'm going to, so I have my squeegee. And the squeegee is the thing that forces the ink through onto the piece of paper. So I'm going to go ahead and flood my screen this way. And flooding the screen is what we call it when we just try and get the ink to kind of go down into the screen and kind of get it wet. So the big enemy of printing with, uh, in screen printing is drying. So you don't want your ink to dry because this is acrylic, right? So when you have acrylic ink um, and you let it dry in the air, it becomes a permanent polymer or plastic and you can't clean it out of anything. So if you let your ink dry on your screen, your screen will be ruined. You probably won't be able to clear that out. You can try but it often makes things like really, really miserable. So um, I'm trying to keep my, my screen wet at all times. I always try to make sure that I have a spritzer of water around and then I also try to make sure that I have, um, you know, a rag and some stuff like that to clean things up. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pull this and when you screen print, you wanna have the screen at about a 45 degree angle. You don't want it like this because that'll make the ink wish or you don't want it to. You don't want it too straight up and down because that'll scrape it. You want it kind of at a 45 degree angle you have to push down with a good amount of pressure, right? So you have to push down very hard and just pull. This is where going to the gym a lot can really, really help. <clears throat> All right, so once we've done that, I can just put my screen right there to let it sit. And then, uh, here, you can see what happened with, this, with the first print, right? So um, now what you want to do as you addition is you want to try and check your prints and make sure that they're all kind of coming out. Well, so if you see here, I don't know if you can see this, but there's kind of like a little halo effect on the bottom of this, right? There's just a little bit of a problematic area there that's not, not quite printing correctly. And so that's from not having enough snap distance. And so snap distance is the distance between the screen and the paper. And if the screen and the paper are too close together, I'm gonna get, the, the paper is gonna stick and it's gonna kind of pull off of there. You like that sound? It's nice, isn't it? So you wanna make sure that you, um, 
put snap distance in. So I'm going to show you how to do that now. And the drying rack over here, this is where we put our prints to dry, kind of on the, this, these gray shelves, right? So let's put another piece of paper in. And I'm going to set up my snap distance, and this is where we use these cards. So we use a lot of cards in this class. And I'm going to go ahead and try and set my snap distance up to like three cards. And we'll see if that's enough. So um, again, in the, all this means is that it's just holding the screen off of the paper. So once I get it kind of set up the way I want, that's going to give me distance, right, between the paper and that screen. And so I'm just going to go ahead and tape those down real quick. Now we're going to try another one. So my screen's been flooded, so I can just pull it. And when you flood a screen, you're not putting a lot of ink down, you're just pushing it with the sharp edge of that squeegee back over there to keep that, to keep it moist, right? So, ooh, much better. So this time, if you'll note, we have a, you know, nice, much nicer flat area there. It's not all haloed up and, and sort of bushy. So if I have any more trouble, I can uh, raise the snap distance on it, or I can, um, you know, try to uh, um, do some other tricks too that I'll show you as we print. So I'm just going to keep going here, and see what happens. The great thing about screen printing is it's fast. So those of you with attention deficit issues will really love this because it goes really quickly. Um, <clears throat> and I'll just kind of keep pulling them. So. So again, flood back every single time. You have to make sure you're flood stroking back. So, so if I keep having trouble with, you know, this, I can always add more cards to give me a little bit more snap distance. Um, if I notice that areas of the screen are, aren't printing that should be printing, especially in little fine detail areas that happen sometimes, you might need to spritz your screen uh, with water and then just pull a few prints on newsprint. So I'll show you how to do that here in a second. And the other cool thing about this printing table, it has all these holes drilled in it, just like a, uh, you know, foosball table, or not foosball, but an air hockey table or something. So if you turn on this pump, it'll suck the paper down. So I'll show you how that works here in a second. No, it's supposed to. You plug it in. You need to plug it in over here in the, uh, you know, against the wall where the etching press is plugged in. So. Back we come. Just make sure that the paper doesn't pull up and kind of um, you know, end up sticking to the back side of the screen. That happens sometimes with really sticky paper. So. So then once I'm done, now that I'm finished with this, then I need to clean up. And it's really important, again, that I don't let anything dry out. So um, I'm going to take this ink knife here, and I'm just going to scrape as much ink as I can back into my container of ink. So we try to save the ink. We try to keep it around or mix it back up later if we want to. Um, you can always combine together a couple of different colors and make new things. So we'll have a big stack of these yogurt containers over there that you can use to clean your... Uh, you know, you can use to, uh, you know, mix new colors. So please use those first before you go to the buckets and use brand new color. Like, see if you can't reclaim something that's already kind of being, uh, being used. So then I like to scrape as much of this off of here as I can. Back. In my container. And then all of this needs to go over here. 
get cleaned in the sink before it dries, right? Really important that we never let the acrylic ink dry. So don't let your uh, don't let your print get ruined by um, you know letting this acrylic ink dry in it. So so I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the camera, and then we're gonna go over there and uh, I'll show you how to clean it.